and here is a new Rigol DS 1000 Z series and uh, I just found it's this is a very uh, this is a more of an early uh, prototype unit and I just found an, a bug in the uh, firmware and just so happens we have Stone from Rigol he's um, X R and D uh, guy and um, he just called headquarters and uh, they're gonna send the new firmware to fix it beautiful that's service for you and there's John South in the background there and we have three viewers complete with amp hour t-shirt where's your t-shirts guys come on Antonio I'm waiting for my PCB <laughs> <laughs> and show 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 them your multimeter show them your multimeter here we go Ba -da 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 -da. Luke 27 and the only one in the world to be signed. Look at that. I don't know why he wants it signed, but he got it signed. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Fidelity. Fidelity. Yeah. And there's a new, brand spanking new, not even released yet, uh, DG 10. 60 is it the 1060 series? Yeah, this is this two of them. Ta -da! Oh, it's a 1000 Z series. Yeah, there you go. 1000 Z series. So there you go. 200 meg samples, 14 bits. Um, it's got a seven-digit counter. More memory. Uh, update all. Oh, okay. And what does it come standard? Uh, what's the standard memory? For these ones. Yep. Uh, standard memory is eight. Eight meg. And they've got the silly little flary. Uh, Corners on them, same drop as the protection. power supply. Okay, drop protection. Yeah, <laughs> great. But that looks really quite neat. So that's not not released yet. It's out next month. Stone. This month. This uh, end. Out this month. End of this month. There you go. <laughs> and it's complete ARB gen, of course. And how much does this cost? Um, these are going to. We don't have a retail price yet, but they retail between the 1022 and the 4062, so right. somewhere between $400 to $800. And instead of the annoying dot uh, that we have on the uh, 4000 series, this one has nice little waveform views. I like that. Excellent. Well done. And uh, there are several differences between the uh, 1000Z series and the uh, Big Brother, it's 2000. Uh, series. Well, uh, the first one is that uh, it's the same resolution display, of course, the 800 by 400, but it is smaller. Um, I think it's like an inch or an inch and a half uh, smaller. The other thing is you can't actually remove the menus on here, whereas you can on the 2000. So you're fixed to 12 horizontal divisions on this, whereas on the 2000 model you can have 14 horizontal divisions. So you can actually get rid of those menus. So um, yeah, a bigger real estate on the 2000 model. And of course one of the big things, because this is a much smaller scope, it's similar in size to the 1052E, you don't get that nice big uh, waveform replay knob that you do on the 2000 series scope but this still does have um, limited waveform replay it's in the utility menu here like the 1052e and you go into the record function so it does have limited record function but it's not nearly as good as the uh, 2000 series scope so there some of the big differences the other uh, thing is it does yes it does have an intensity graded uh, display on it but it's only uh, 64 levels I believe 64 uh, you know grayscale levels or uh, green levels I guess you could call it whereas the or intensity levels whereas the 2000 series scope has uh, 256 levels so yes it does have it but not quite as good but you wouldn't expect that for the price either and it does come with uh, 12 meg points uh, standard memory which is a lot and uh, 24 meg points as a software option the other difference with the 2000 is that um, uh, it does only, ha only have 30,000 waveform updates per second peak, whereas you get 50,000 on the uh, 2000 series model. And it doesn't have the low uh, noise floor either. You can only go down to uh, one millivolt per division. It doesn't have that uh, very nice 500 microvolts uh, per division range like you can get on the uh, that you get on the uh, 2000 model. And that's the noise floor um, at uh, full bandwidth, I believe, at uh, one millivolt per division. So it's still not bad at all. And of course, you can bandwidth limit that to 20 meg 
and there's a 20 meg. It's not much better either, unfortunately. So we've got a full division with uh, lots of, quite a bit of high frequency spiking there. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm not sure what's going on there, but uh, there you go. Check that out. So that's with the 20 megahertz bandwidth limit on. And we're bound with limit off. And you can see, notice that the offset changes there, but I don't know if we've actually, uh, this unit's been calibrated, run through its automated calibration routine or not. I'm not sure uh, what's going on there, but that's that's rather interesting. Uh, that 20 megahertz bandwidth limit, and we're getting some high frequency spiky stuff there. That's, that's rather, that's rather unusual. All right, we may have an explanation for uh, that bandwidth uh, thing here. This is um, early hardware. This is not uh, production hardware, so uh, don't take that as uh, um, yeah an issue that uh, would be in the production hardware. So we won't know. We'd have to test some production hardware, but there you go. It is running the latest uh, firmware, though, but I have been uh, reliably told it is old hardware. And, of course, yes, we have the waveform uh, gens down here, and uh, output on off it's a uh, dual channel and we're source one frequency and sine wave all sorts of stuff these are the built-in waveform sine square ramp pulse dc noise built-in and are fairly comprehensive so uh, really quite nice it uses the uh, same software i am told as the uh, 4000 the dg um, arb software so if you're familiar with that for the 4000 series arb signal gen then uh, uses the same stuff, generate the same R waveform, so it really is quite a flexible unit. I really like it, it uh, really is um, hugely feature packed, especially for the price, it looks absolutely phenomenal. And it does come in four models apparently that are not upgradable, so the four models are the uh, DS1104, uh, i.e. the uh, 100 megahertz version or the 70 megahertz version. So there's two bandwidth models, and if it has the dash S on the end, that's for the uh, dual channel wave gen. We think uh, we've been arguing here about the price of the wave gen. I think it's um, you know around the 200 or maybe 250 mark extra for the dual channel wave gen. But you can't just buy one channel, and if you buy the model the Z model without the wave gen then you cannot upgrade later so uh, I, I assume it you know, physically does not have the hardware in there so it's not just a license upgrade so you have to choose wisely and we believe the base model units are the 70 megahertz uh, unit with no uh, sig gens but you know that includes still includes 30,000 waveform updates um, four channels and uh, 12 Meg points memory because you can't get a two channel version of this, it's four channel only, is only 585 US dollars. And uh, you know, that's uh, god, absolutely incredible how the market has changed. Unbelievable price point for what you get these days, absolutely amazing. But the thing is, um, uh, as a lot of people may know, the uh, Ameri it's cheaper to buy the Rigol products in America than it is to buy them in China. And that's because uh, I was just told that there's a 70% uh, tax within China and that's why they're, they're much more expensive in there. Whereas if they export them to America, uh, they get that tax back and uh, don't have to pay it. So that's why they can sell them cheaper in the US than in China where, where they originally come from. Go figure. So all, the, uh, all you Chinese people are missing out on on the uh, on the bargain sorry about that